Alrighty, welcome to another video review. In this one, I'll be talking about the anode bevel and the focal spot. So these are all um, components of our equipment that make um, exposure changes and geometric changes um, to our image. So uh, these are things that we can adjust. We call these things variables. The anode bevel is um, refers to the angle of the target surface of the anode in relationship to a, a, a vertical line drawn perpendicular to the long axis of the x-ray tube. Basically, if you think about it, the anode, the positive side of the x-ray tube, the spinning tungsten and molybdenum disc, um, is struck by a, a high, high velocity stream of, of uh, electrons. And um, our goal here is to um, one, you know, slow these electrons down so that we can use their kinetic energy, convert that into electromagnetic radiation. Um, we have to do it in such a way to where the um, to where they are projected largely downward. Um, so the anode bevel, is, the anode itself, the anode surface itself is beveled. Um, making a bevel means to, to cut that surface at an angle. Um, <clears throat> so this affects some things. Uh, this anode bevel. This is a, obviously not something that you can change. Um, you know, um, on hand in any x-ray room. It's not as if you swap out the anode, but different machines have different anode bevel angles depending on their use. And we'll sort of try to uh, um, uh, allude to some of those as we go through this. So it affects some things. It affects both the size of the projected focal spot, we call that the line focus principle, and the distribution of the x-ray intensity within the beam. Uh, we think about that as the anode heel effect. Um, the anode heel itself is the basically the, the back and bottom side of the anode. Um, let's take a look at some things. Um, so the line focus principle, that's our first concept to kind of try to wrap our minds around. Line focus principle is simply the size of the projected or effective focal spot and um, its relationship to uh, sharpness of any radiographic image. So it's controlled by a couple of things. Uh, initially, it's controlled by the width of the electron beam coming from the filament. Um, secondly, controlled by the angle of the anode bevel. The smaller the projected focal spot, the greater the sharpness of details in the, in the image. Okay, so as shown on the, uh, in this diagram here, uh, the image on the right, um, if the uh, anode bevel were uh, 45 degrees, which it's not, but if it were 45 degrees, the actual um, projected stream of electrons would be as wide as the effective focal spot. Um, but it's not, so at smaller angles, the anode surface uh, bevel is steeper and the effective focal spot is smaller. Um, the way you think about these focal spots, we have the actual focal spot, which is the area on the anode that is struck by the stream of electrons, and the um, more anode bevel angle that there is, the wider the actual focal spot will be. A wider actual focal spot means a wider effective focal spot. So there's a relationship here between actual focal spot size and effective focal spot. And again, this is where the uh, stream of electrons is striking the anode. The way to think about the actual focal spot is, as I said, it's the place on the anode um, uh, uh, where the electron stream is actually striking. And the way to think about the effective focal spot is, is if you were laying on the x-ray table looking up towards the anode, what would you see? What would the size of the focal spot look like to you? And using that idea, you can see that with an uh, increased anode angle, you would see more of the anode surface. So the, uh, the effective focal spot for you laying on the table looking up at the x-ray tube would look bigger. So the true actual focal spot is measured along the anode surface. The actual focal spot is the area for dispersion of heat from electron bombardment. That is to say, a wider actual focal spot is better um, for heat dissipation. Um, however, it has some effects on image quality. Um, a smaller actual focal spot would equal a smaller effective focal spot, increasing image quality, but giving us less heat dissipation. So using a very small electron beam to achieve a small focal spot would concentrate the heat and potentially melt the anode. So we have to strike a balance here between how big our focal spot is, which affects image uh, sharpness, 
and also heat dispersion. We're making a large amount of heat in these X-ray tubes. You know, um, you know, you hear things in in school as as stuff like, you know, out of 100% of the energy that goes into shooting that electron stream across, roughly 99% of that energy or more is turned into heat. Um, the rest, that less than 1%, we actually get usable X-rays from that. The line focus principle makes it possible to achieve a very small effective focal spot while at the same time allowing sufficient area for heat dispersion at the actual focal spot. And our goal here is to strike a balance, right? Um, achieve maximum sharpness while maintaining good heat dispersion. Okay, so um, standard x-ray tubes. Anode angles range from 15 to 17 degrees giving us a uh, focal spot of about one millimeter to 1.2 millimeters in, uh, for the large size, and a small of about half that. Uh, roughly speaking, when you choose focal spot, um, the small focal spot is about half the size of the large focal spot. Keep in mind, a small focal spot means a smaller area for the electron stream to strike and more heat concentrated into that area. So you have to take those considerations into account when you're doing things like setting your factors. Um, some special procedure tubes, such as angiographic procedure tubes, uh, have an anode bevel that's shallower, 7 to 10 degrees, and we get smaller focal spots somewhere around the 0.2 to 0.3 millimeter mark. Um, so again, using the idea of if you lay on the table and were to look up towards the anode, what would you see? You could see that in different spots on the table, the projected focal spot would change in size. That is to say, um, from the anode end of the, of the image receptor, the focal spot would appear smaller. The cathode end of the image receptor, the focal spot would appear larger. And that's gonna have some changes, some, some um, detail changes to the image. Roughly speaking, you know, the smaller your focal spot is, the more detail you can achieve because that decreases the size of this thing we call penumbra. Penumbra is the blurriness at the edges of your image, and with a small focal spot, you have less blur. You could achieve the least blur from um, projecting the x-rays from a what's called a point source, a source with no actual size, but that's effectively an, unachievable. The only other way to increase sharpness in this case would be to increase your source to image distance, which I'll talk about in another video. So um, the line focus principle says that the projected focal spot is going to be smaller than the actual focal spot. The size of the effective or projected focal spot affects image detail due to blurriness at the edge of the image. And the smaller the projected focal spot is, the less blur there is at the edge of the images and thereby the greater uh, image sharpness you will have. So again, this means the anode end of the image is sharper than the cathode end of the image. The effect can be measured on a large image receptor plate. So you could actually see this by putting different objects of equal um, size and shape on opposite ends of an image receptor, far ends of the image receptor, and observing that the cathode end of the image receptor would be relatively less sharp and the anode end would be relatively sharper. Um, and lastly, the effective focal spot is more accurately defined as the focal spot projected by the central ray. So as I say, I consider the um, effective focal spot to be what we call the projected focal spot. Okay, short little video on um, the uh, anode bevel and focal spot. Um, please follow up for the next video where I'll get to talk about the anode heel effect itself. Thank you.